Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hey. Hi there. Hi guys. Miss Becky here with your January edition of First Chapter Friday. Today I'm going to be reading King of the Screw Ups by K.L. Going. This is a poignant, entertaining narrative of one high school senior's journey to find himself. His dad kicks him out of the house and he goes to live with his Aunt Pete. No, I did not misspeak there. In Aunt Pete's double wide. Here he screws up right into independence and self-confidence. Something we could all use a little bit of as teenagers, I think. Okay, here we go with First Chapter Friday. So technically it's First Chapter Friday, but the first chapter of this book is actually a flashback memory of a television interview between our main character, Liam, and his two parents, and of course then the interviewer. So I'm going to actually read you the second chapter. But what's important to know from the first chapter is Liam's parents are definitely not screw-ups. His mother is a top fashion model gracing runways from Paris to Milan, spokesperson for a skincare line, and proprietor of a style boutique. His father is CEO of Money Vision, one of the most successful businesses in the United States. So with chapter two of King of the Screw-Ups by Kay Elgoin, here's your first chapter Friday reading. <laughs> you are a screw-up, Liam. Do you think being Mr. Popular will be enough to get you by your whole life? I'm lying on top of dad's desk, drunk and half naked, wearing only rumpled boxers and one sock, while a sobbing girl who never really liked me in the first place is searching for her pants and top. Please don't call my parents, Delia pleads. I can explain, Mr. Geller. I'll do anything, just don't call my parents, please. I wonder if begging will work for her, because it never does for me. I close my eyes, letting the waves of nausea wash over me. Delia finishes buttoning her shirt and gets on her knees to straighten these stacks of papers we knocked over. She sets them on the desk, but I accidentally knock them over again when I try unsuccessfully to sit up. The world spins and I'm vaguely aware that dad is now yelling. Do you think it's okay to fool around in my office? He's saying on my desk where your mother and I are right downstairs. He's looking at me, but Delia answers. We didn't know you were there, she says, crying harder. I ought to be pleading too, but I can't stop thinking how stupid I was to believe Delia was actually in love with me. She's totally smart, president of the honor society and everything, so why would she ever like me? But there we were at this party, both plastered, and she's telling me how she's had this crush on me all of last year when we were juniors. You're so beautiful, Liam, she shouts over the pounding music. You're sweet and funny, and I'm totally in love with you. That's what she said. So who could blame me for ending up back in dad's office? I wanted to show her all of his awards and stuff, but the whole time I kept hoping I wouldn't say anything monumentally stupid. So I started kissing her to minimize talking and that's when everything went wrong. As soon as a girl starts taking off my clothes, I can tell how they really feel about me. The first thing Delia took off was my watch. It's a really nice watch. Just the right degree of tarnished and the worn leather band is so soft. I picked it up used at this shop in Soho, but it's still a brand name watch, so it was a rare find. Delia dropped it on the floor beside my dad's desk like it was garbage. And that bothered me, but I was in the process of taking off her sweater, so I let it go. 
Only then she unbuttoned my shirt. The shirt itself, a can of coal from a couple of years ago, wasn't that special. But the thing about that shirt is the perfect metal buttons. They're thin and sharp. But they could have been plastic buttons with gaps stamped on them for all the care Delia took because she didn't even see them. She wadded up my shirt, popping the buttons in the process, and tossed it across the room. Now, you could argue that she was distracted, but so was I. And I still noticed the black velvet bra, probably from Victoria's Secret, which told me that underneath her brainy exterior, she was very sexy. I liked that. But I could tell that Delia didn't like or dislike anything about me. And that's when I knew the girl doesn't love me. She doesn't even like me. She just wants to be popular. Well, who the hell cares when she's taking your clothes off, right? But I cared. And the thing is, I did it anyway. Right up until the moment my dad walked through the door. So now, as he yells, I lie still and let my head spin, thinking of all the things in life I wish I had done differently. Are you listening to me? Dad bellows at the top of his lungs and Delia cringes. You've really compromised your future this time, Dad hollers. Despite everything I've done for you, you have no moral qualities. You are nothing I ever wanted in a son, and I do not say that lightly. Although he does say it all the time. When a child has been given a fine upbringing and an international education, and he still turns out to be a delinquent, it is not the parent's fault. Dad is in the zone, and in his zeal, his thick black hair falls under his forehead, and the vein in his throat throbs. I watch it pounding. Actually, it's my head that's pounding. I told you last time, I was not going to put up with this behavior. I've had enough of you. I am sick of you, Liam. Sick of you. The words are starting to blend together, slurring. But Dad's not the drunk one. I am. So it must be my brain that's slurring. Sick of, sick of, what is he saying? Truth is, I do feel kind of sick. Actually, really sick. I want you out of my house. Mr. Geller! Delia gasps, but Dad gives her the same look he gives Mom, narrowing his eyes until she shrinks. I feel sorry for Delia right then. Sorry that I dragged her into this, and sorry that she has to listen to Dad yelling. I try to sit up again, and I think maybe this time I'll figure out the right thing to say, and Dad will take everything back. He can't possibly mean that, can he? So I take a deep breath, trying to force my eyes to focus. If I could just have a second to apologize. But unfortunately, the moment I sit up, the world spins. Everything around me turns upside down. My vision narrows and everything fades to black. And that is chapter two of King of the Screw-Ups by K.L. Going.